Okay, let's look at some types of gene mutations. Mutations have been made very famous in media and movies and cartoons. As a kid, for me, it was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Some little turtles that came across some radioactive material and then they become these human-sized, ninja-capable, talking turtles. I was a big fan and I used to pretend like I was a different one. Leonardo, Michelangelo, all those things. Then came the X-Men. There's a whole bunch of other ideas here. But the idea that mutations can lead to superpowers is something that fascinates humans. Unfortunately, uh, that doesn't really happen because you need a lot of very specific mutations in order to develop those kinds of abilities. Anyways, I'm still hoping that one day I can develop some kind of super mutation. I wonder what mine would be. Maybe three hands. Radiation can cause mutation. Ex overexposure to x-rays, uh, UV rays, these things are all causing uh, accumulated uh, damage in your DNA. So gene mutation is basically, what is a gene? A gene is just a length of DNA. What is DNA? DNA is a sequence of nucleotides uh, organized by A's, T's, C's, and G's. There's only four different letters there, but their sequence is important because they will code for important proteins. So a mutation is basically when one of those letters, one or more of those letters, gets either deleted or replaced, or you can even have extra letters that get added in there or a whole sequence can get inverted there's all kinds of things can happen you're basically changing the sequence of letters that are in there sometimes those gene mutations can be passed on to your kids especially if these are in the sperm cells or the egg cells and so that is going to cause uh, future problems as well too. But you can have mutations that are happening, for example, hanging out in the sun all the time, UV rays, that can cause mutations in various types of cells in your body. Extensive mutations can lead to cancers and other types of things. Viruses can also insert bits of DNA that can cause various types of gene mutations or things um, that are not supposed to be functioning normally. Most mutations negatively affect organisms. However, mutations are the primary way that new uh, new forms can arise. So we contribute, uh, we attribute actually natural selection and evolution. Well, mutation is one of the ways that evolution can actually occur. So if you go on and you study evolution later on, uh, you're going to understand that mutations are what allow for new physical traits to arise, basically. Okay. An albino animal basically losing all its pigmentation. Um, and so it's just basically very pale and white looking is caused by a mutation. Under normal circumstances, if you are all of a sudden lacking pigmentation and you don't have your camouflage and you just stand out in a forest totally white, then uh, that could be a disadvantage for you. But if you're in, a, in an environment where being white actually helps you to mix in, for example, near the poles or in an area that's covered with a lot of ash for whatever reason, that may be an advantage. So there are some situations where mutations can lead to um, specific advantages. A gene mutation is defined as a heritable factor that controls a specific characteristic. Actually, we should change that. A gene is defined as a heritable factor that controls a specific characteristic. So a mutation is going to be any kind of alteration in that gene, which could affect that heritable factor. Okay, two types of mutations that you should be familiar with, but you don't have to know them specifically, but it's not too hard to remember. A base substitution mutation is exactly that. A base gets substituted by another base. So for example, here you have a gene sequence, a gene sequence, CTTGGA, GTTAGG. I've separated them out by three because you should know if you study transcription or translation that every three letters codes for something important, an amino acid. So we read them in groups of three and each three, each group of three bases is called a codon, basically. So if one of these letters actually gets replaced by another uh, or gets substituted by another, so this G has been replaced by a T, that can have enormous consequences because this triplet codon actually coded for a specific amino acid. But if I change one of the letters, it could result in a completely different amino acid. If you end up with a different amino acid, you could change the function entirely. We're going to see that in our final example. But notice here that even though I've changed this one codon, this amino acid 
uh, will be different, but the ones afterwards will still be the same. So if the protein can still function with one amino acid different, then you're okay. A worst, uh, a worst case scenario is if you with if you have something called a frame shift mutation. Uh, this is an, a mutation. I'll just show you the example is probably best to see here. So if here I have a reading frame of CTT, GTG, these are four codons basically. And then if you actually add an additional letter in there, if this letter gets added in there, look at what happens. Does anything that happens before the reading frame is okay, but afterwards, look at how all of the codons afterwards, if we're reading in groups of three, are going to be completely different. So this will definitely have a, a detrimental effect and probably result in an organism not being able to develop properly or even being uh, aborted naturally. Okay, so this is going to be a very big problem. It's called a frame shift mutation because the entire reading frame will shift as a result of an additional letter being added in there. Here's a picture of some blood cells, minus red blood cells, minus their color. Uh, the disease is called sickle cell anemia. On the left here, we can see normal blood cells. Over here, we can see blood cells that have been affected. And you can notice how these cells kind of have a, uh, a sharper, sickly shape, which is why this, is, this disease is called sickle cell anemia. You know your red blood cells. I don't know why these aren't red, by the way. But the red blood cells uh, are supposed to be carrying oxygen. So if they're this shaped, you can see a couple consequences. One, they might not be so good at carrying oxygen, which leads to the anemia part. And then number two, uh, because of their sharp edges like this, they can maybe clump up a little bit easier and actually uh, increase the frequency of blood clots and uh, lower the mess with your, the, the regular flow of blood through the system, through the arteries and capillaries. So um, some issues. Turns out this disease is actually the result of a mutation. It's result of a mutation. It's a recessive trait. If you don't know what that means yet, uh, just take, take note of it and you'll understand that very, very soon. Recessive trait basically means that in order to have this disease, you have to have two copies. You must have inherited this particular allele from both of your parents. It's estimated that 1 in 12 people are carriers of this disease. If you're a carrier, you're going to see this later when we learn about genetics in more detail, but a carrier is somebody who has a copy of the allele, but also has a copy of the normal allele. So one parent gave them the normal allele, and one parent gave them the diseased allele. But you won't actually have full-blown sickle cell anemia if you are only a carrier. To have the full disease, both your parents had to give you the actual uh, diseased allele. It's caused by a mutation, and we're going to see it in, in some detail in, in the next slide right here. So what kind of mutation causes sickle cell disease? Well, we talked about base substitution mutations and frame shift mutations. We said that a frame shift mutation is more detrimental because it changes the entire reading frame. And so all the rest of the amino acids after the insertion point are going to be different. But if you have a base substitution, if you have a base substitution, this is a normal situation here, and one letter actually gets changed. So GAG gets turned to GTG and that results in an RNA codon that is slightly different. This results in a different amino acid being inserted into the correct protein sequence. And normally we're supposed to have glutamic acid here as the correct amino acid, but in this case it gets replaced by something called valine. And um, if you're writing about this, you should be able to tell the story all the way, all the way from the beginning, starting with DNA, talking about transcription and translation, and how if one letter gets changed and that affects transcription, and therefore will affect translation and the correct amino acid that's supposed to be present. It is a base substitution mutation. So all the amino acids afterwards are still okay. The ones before are still okay as well too. The hemoglobin gene becomes the sickle cell anemia version of the gene. So a different form of the gene, which we call an allele. Uh, it's represented by writing capital H and little b for the normal gene and then HBS for the diseased, uh, the diseased gene. GAG mutates to GTG, which results in, after transcription and translation, a completely different amino acid. Valine ends up replacing glutamic acid. And that difference, that difference in the amino acid changes the structure of the hemoglobin protein totally and actually ends up creating cells that look like this. So the phenotype is called the, uh, the physical trait of the cell. So the red blood cells become sickle-shaped and they end up with reduced oxygen-carrying efficiency. 
this has other types of consequences. It turns out that, um, and you'll see this a little bit later as well too in the evolution unit, but it turns out that being a carrier, being a carrier for this actual disease, having one copy of the actual allele actually prevents you from getting malaria. So you will see that there are very high incidences of this disease in areas where malaria is very common. So what I'm saying is that you get some kind of um, benefit to having the this allele being present in your population if malaria is something that's more likely to kill you in that particular area. So very interesting how this mutation here can be a potential advantage depending on the area that you live in. So check out maps showing the distribution of sickle cell anemia and you'll actually see mm -hmm. that uh, there's a high correlation, high correlation with malaria. And this is more than just a correlation type thing we have seen people have done studies there's a causal effect about this as well too okay hopefully you have a better understanding of mutations and now you have a specific example that you can uh, talk about in your studies